Let's consider a vertical circular motion problem. In our problem, a motorcycle goes into a loop-de-loop -loop and coasts through the loop as shown. That is, the rider does not propel themselves at all during the stunt. So let's stop here and get some terms clear. This particular stunt involves non-uniform circular motion in that the rider's speed is going to change during the stunt. It'll start going out fast and slow down as it reaches the top, and then speed up again as it heads towards the bottom again. This motion is non-uniform. This would be opposed to the problems involving uniform circular motion. In these cases, the speed stays constant throughout the turn. Given this, we need to consider different positions on the track separately. Let's label four positions to consider. Number one at the bottom here, number two as the bike is halfway up the loop, number three at the top of the loop, and number four as the bike is halfway down the loop. Now a good way to consider the bike's motion in the loop is by considering the conservation of energy. Let's see if you can relate your knowledge of energy to this situation. Where would the rider have the maximum potential energy? Think about that for a second and pick a position. If you picked position number three, you'd be right. The rider would have the maximum potential energy at the top of the loop. Potential energy equals mgh and the height is a maximum at the top. Where would the rider have the maximum kinetic energy? Think about that one for a second and pick a position. If you picked position number one, you'd be right. The rider would have the maximum kinetic energy at the bottom of the loop. The potential energy is a minimum at the bottom and the rider has maximum velocity. So now that we're back thinking about energy, let's walk ourselves through the positions. In position number one, the rider has maximum kinetic energy, maximum speed. By the time they reach position number two, they've slowed down a bit, and part of the kinetic energy has been converted into potential energy. By the time they reach the top here, in position number three, the kinetic energy is at a minimum, and the potential energy is at a maximum. Of course, the kinetic energy won't be zero at the top as the rider still needs to be moving, but it is a minimum. Then on the way down at position number four here, some of the potential energy has been converted back to kinetic energy. That is, they're speeding up. In these types of problems, we often use the conservation of energy to determine the velocity at the position in question. Then, use our knowledge of circular motion and a good free body diagram to finish up the problem. For comparison, in a uniform circular motion problem, since the speed is the same throughout, we usually skip this first step, and we just use the velocity provided. In a non-uniform circular motion problem like this, establishing the velocity at the point of interest is typically required. To add some numbers to this particular example, our example becomes if a rider is traveling at 20 meters per second when they initially enter the loop with a radius of 7.5 meters, what is the normal force on the rider at the top of the loop? So now we know our position of interest. So in order to solve this, we should first determine the speed of the rider at the top of the loop. We can do this using conservation of energy, as discussed. We know the velocity at position number one, so we'll use this as before and use the position number three as the after. Considering the potential energy at the bottom to be zero, we can write, and with a little rearranging, we can solve for V3, the velocity at position number three, the top. Now that we know the velocity at our point of interest, we can move forward and analyze the forces and accelerations. We'll start with a free body diagram as always. We'll have the 
bike and rider's weight FG pointing down. We also have the normal force of the track pushing down on the bike's tires, FN. So the centripetal acceleration, well, that's always towards the center of the loop, meaning that our net force must also be towards the center. Let's therefore consider down as positive. Starting with Newton's second law, we can write F net equals MA. In our case, the acceleration is centripetal acceleration, so we'll add a C here. And plugging in some details, we have rearranging for our normal force, we show that Fn equals mv squared over r minus fg. And then we can solve. Looking back at our equation here, we see that the greater the velocity at the top of the loop, the greater the normal force. That is, the force between the rider and the track. If the velocity was lower and this term was equal to fg, the rider would feel weightless at the top of the loop. If the velocity was lower than that, well, the stunt wouldn't end well. To review, in this tutorial we learned that we need to be aware of the difference between a uniform circular motion problem and a non-uniform circular motion problem. The difference being that the speed is the same in a uniform circular motion problem. So you can jump right into your free body diagram and F net equals MA. In a non-uniform circular motion problem, the speed varies. So we often have the additional step of first determining the speed at the point of interest before we can get into the forces and accelerations. We found that the conservation of energy can be very useful for this. Once we establish the velocity at our point of interest, we can treat it pretty much like any other dynamics problem. We draw a free body diagram and then use F net equals MA. In a circular motion problem, the A becomes AC just because it's centripetal acceleration and it's always towards the center of the curve. 